Hello again, I'm Johnny Smith from The Late Break Show. I'm Richard Porter from Sniff Petrol. You might know us better as Smith & Sniff on a podcast, but maybe you don't. In maybe which not. case, it doesn't matter, because we're at the Michelin doesn't Supercar matter. Paddock. Supercar Paddock. Yeah. And we start, supercars, Ferrari. Whole range of Ferraris, and men, actually, if you're interested there's, in those, but um, mainly Ferraris. I'm this gonna, is... I've got to say, there's a lot of new Ferraris. A lot. I'm quite uh, bewildered, actually, by the selection. Let me talk you through it as best I can understand it. This yes. is the relatively new Roma. It's a sort of GT-ish coupe. I would hesitate to call it entry level, but it's the lower end of the range. Yeah. Um, and if you have always wanted a Jaguar F-Type but wished it was a Ferrari, I think the design of this does that justice. This is the Portofino M. This is sort of the entry level. I know what that is. You would probably equate it to sort of maybe a sort of Mercedes SL in as much as it's a bit more cruisery, but I gather this is actually quite sharp to drive now. Exactly, yeah. yeah it's yeah. Uh, turbocharged V8 in there. Yeah. Uh, down here... So that's the artist formerly known as the California that's team. That's right. Uh, F8 Tributo, the F8 Coupe, and then the FX Spider, which is the roofless version of that. Yeah. Those, again, sort of used to be the bedrock of the Ferrari range, the mid-engine V8 powered Coupe and Targa, effectively. Now, that's nice. there's a new car coming from Ferrari, the 296. I'll mention that in a minute. There were some suggestions that that would be the end of the F8, but no, the F8 continues in production. This is still in the range, so we're now at four cars. I like that, that is good. We trot down here to the 812 GTS, the ruthless version of the 812 GTB. Yes. Um, and once upon a time, the big V12 front engine car would have been the flagship, uh, like That's the 550 Maranello was, for example. Yeah, yeah. But uh, there's more to come. So <laughs> <laughs> there's this. Now, this, you've got to see this car from dead head on. It looks so wide and so flat. It's quite an, a thing, the SF90. SF90. Uh, yeah, Straydale. Oh, Straydale, yes. <laughs> I always want to call it the There's the Straydale or the Spider in there. That's the yeah. one with no roof, but this is a hybrid. It's uh, four-wheel drive. This is, I suppose, flagship. Yeah. So there's there's two more. And then right at the end here, we have these limited-run Monzas, the SP1, the SP2. They've got the SP2 here, roofless um, specials, which I suppose are, at the moment, the flagships. Yes but Just they, they are limited edition. Yeah, because they're so limited, you won't see them very often at all. The new 296 is the new affordable hybrid. You can guess where the inverted commas go in that sentence. Uh, so it's less than the SF90, uh, be about sort of 400,000 pounds. They don't have one here. It's very, very new. It was only announced a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, and let's not forget there's also a Ferrari SUV coming sooner rather than later. So it's an actual fact that at the moment, certainly in the UK, Ferrari has a broader range of models than, say, Fiat, certainly more than Alfa Romeo or Maserati. They sell a <laughs> mind-boggling number of cars. Yeah. They don't want you to know that they sell a mind-boggling no, amount of no, cars. No, they're still very exclusive. So from that um, the, the sort of roofless thing, there's a couple of other roofless cars in this paddock. But I guess they're all, they've all come out around the same time. Yeah, it's what someone has worked out is that one of the things that the super rich really want to do is get constantly bombarded with insects and so and um, UV. And UV. so the, the manufacturers have risen to the occasion now the car we were going to show you was parked here oh it's um, gone. the cloaking technology that you saw in that james bond film has become a reality or it's driven off we're not sure it's called the v12 speedster uh, about 800 horsepower they're only so. going to make 88 of them no yeah. windscreen whatsoever just little sort of aero things that are supposed to shoot the air over your head. It's got something incredible ducting going on. Yeah. Uh, well, speaking of noises, this is the Aston Martin uh, Valkyrie, yes. which has a V12 in it, which seemingly has, when you hear it running, no flywheel whatsoever. Yeah. Fing, fing. It's, in, it's a remarkable it thing. So, um, 1,100 horsepower? 1,100 horsepower thereabouts. It kind of looks like a, a road league on the Mon car, I would say. Designed by uh, Adrian Newey of the uh, Red Bull Formula One team. And if you can see inside the seating position, basically your bum is the lowest part of you when you're sitting in the car. Your feet raised up like a racing driver. So in a hospital bed? In a hospital bed, yes. Maybe you've broken something and you have to <laughs> elevate your feet. So it perfect for bad sprains or breaks of the foot. Um, How it's, many are they uh, making the feet? They, oh, I'm glad you asked me that, Johnny, because I can't remember, but I have got it written on a very <laughs> small piece of paper. The answer is 150. 
and, and how, and how circa much? Circa two and a half million pounds. Two and a half million sheets. Um, I have to say though, that the, the sound of this car is quite otherworldly. It is, it's it's remarkable. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. truly remarkable. There's a lot of these that I get mixed and up it with. And it's mind-boggling that this is or will be road legal. Um, it seems to be running a little bit late. There's actually uh, a track-only version which will come out first, but this at some point will be able to be driven on the road. And I imagine that all of the owners will do exactly that. Trips to Tesco, you name it, they'll be using this. Yeah, yeah, I, I would. Let's go round the corner. Yeah, yeah. Deliveroo, the ultimate Deliveroo. <laughs> uh, and what do we have round the corner? We have okay, the new, newish. Corvette C8. Yeah. Big news. Uh, first time the Corvette has been mid-engined. Still has a 6.2 litre V8, but now in the middle. Uh, someone just said to me, "Has that still got push rods?" The answer is yes, it does. But it's an engine that works, right? It's, it's, it's a legendary engine. I'm still trying to get my head around the fact that it's mid-engine. But the good news is, you will be able to order them as right-hand drive at some point soon. So that's quite cool. We don't see them in the UK hardly at all. Uh, moving on to super Bugatti, casual. Uh, Bugatti, just, there's a Bugatti there. Chiron it's Post yellow. Uh, it's now Bugatti just been sort of effectively bought by Rimac, as we mentioned when we were in the Electric yeah. Avenue. Um, Which well, else you say? Everything's sort of been said about Bugattis, hasn't it? They're incredibly fast, and you rarely see them around. But um, a little fun fact for you: that um, W16 engine is so thirsty, its cooling system, that the water pump could fill a normal-sized bath in about nine seconds. What's a normal sized bath though? I don't know, it depends how rich you are, I suppose. You haven't been to my house. <laughs> Actually, you have been to my house. Um, Another fun fact uh, the average Bugatti owner uh, also has, uh, on average, two planes. Planes? Or is it one plane and two helicopters? I can't remember. Seriously? Yeah, they tend to be I quite well they off. Said is it 50 cars on average or something? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, this Pagani Huayra. I, I don't get bored of the um, the shiny trinkets on a Huayra. I think uh, there's only a few cars that can come close in yeah. terms of the, the yeah, jewel-like the, the, details. If you look at the way the carbon weave is matched side to side, it yeah. is, and I'm going to use this word advisedly, exquisite. Exquisite. Um, this is the roads to BC. Now, it's a sort of slight contradiction in terms. It's a track-orientated Huayra, but it is also a roadster you can have the roof off which um, I think apart from anything else could lead to more helmet room so that's quite useful um, otherwise it's uh, it's sort of business as Bugani business usual that was sort of BC, a sentence. BC I always thought was before children so is this the one that well, you buy just before becoming a parent? I've got my small piece of paper out again because there's two facts you should know 800 horsepower I think yep. that's probably enough that's and uh, somewhere in the region of 3.7 million pounds is it that like. much? One of those it is yeah wow. sorry Wow. because you've only got 3.6 yeah so. I know what an absolute swine um, very very unusual car that we don't see Zenvo. Um, the Zenvo coming it's, from the uh, it's from Denmark Incredibly angry um, looking car, the Zenvo, isn't it? Yeah. Arachnid like. And the talking point with this is that this rear wing tilts. Yeah. Like some kind of crazy aeroplane technology in bends. It's an That's interesting idea. No one else is doing it, and I don't know whether that means they're ahead of the curve or uh, driving very rapidly it, into a dead end, but it's interesting. Any it's fast, incredible to watch going up the hill yeah, this it is. weekend. And any photographers that take pictures of it at high speed, it looks broken. It does, that's true, yeah. It looks like something snapped. This, this, is, this, is, this is very cool here. We've got an engine next to a car. Yeah, Maserati. now this is a brand new 3 litre V6 twin turbo engine uh, made by Maserati. They didn't do it for the good of their health. They did it to put it in that. This, this is pretty. The MC20, this is their new supercar. Now you can be a bit snobbish about this and go, oh, supercars don't have V6s. Well, they do now, because I think this is, this is many ways on paper, this supercar, 621 horsepower, it's mid-engines, yeah. um, no hybrid stuff on it at the moment, so it's quite sort of pure in that respect. I think but, it's a very pretty car because yeah. it's quite restrained. Mm. They've also, kind of a nod back to some of those wonderful Maseratis of the 70s, the American Bora and stuff like that, which were always meant to be comfortable, more comfortable than the average supercar or even you know, the yeah. average sports coupe. They were all um, sixes as well. Uh, some of them the were. Mirac, yeah, yeah. Wasn't it? yeah. And, and the, they, uh, what's the other one we were talking about yesterday? Well, the Bora was a six and the Merrick was an eight, wasn't it? Or the other way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, this is this has a GT mode. It defaults to GT mode. It's meant to be a little more comfortable. It's not meant to be super hardcore. It does have hardcore settings, so if you want to take it on track, you can. But it's not super wound tight. I'm sure there will be versions like that, but this is the start of it. This is Maserati coming back. Yeah, I was just doing, about to say, this is their mojo returning. Yeah, well, they haven't done a mid-engine car for a very long time. No. So, um, Talking this, of uh, which, could be we're going to go over here. The thing about the supercar paddock is, it is, it is full of new product. 
way, way, way more cars than you expect. Do you think supercars are niche? Well, actually, maybe they're not anymore. No, I don't know. Well, everyone I know has got one, so I mean, it's not true. This is interesting, though. This is a car that we've been waiting to see in the, in, in the, com on the composites. I'm not going to say metal, because it is composites. Um, it features, it's called, it's called the Art Artura, uh, the arterial road is what it was Arterial it's bleeding, it. something like that. It's, um, yeah. This is a V6 car, a plug-in hybrid, it's a Fev. Yeah. In fact, yeah, look, there's a plug in the side of it, just there. Uh, V6, all new um, MCLA, as they call it, the McLaren um, new architecture underneath. Uh, come four Carbon fibre hull, isn't it? It's yeah. It's the central tub of the car. Yeah. Um, I, was, I was having a look earlier, so yeah, three litre turbo, twin turbo, um, four different types of carbon fibre with an all new resin. Four different types? Four different types of carbon fibre. Plain, cheese and onion, salt and vinegar. Yeah, corn and cocktail. Oh yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah, now the power, the engine alone is 585 PS, uh, but with the electric motor assistance, which adds I think about 95 PS, 680 PS in total. Uh, but as I said, it, 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 it's a plug-in. The batteries live under the under your bum. Oh, I actually think it's a very pretty shape with those flying buttresses at the rear. Which yes, is, they are nice. We've, we're big fans of those. Um, one other McLaren for you is this, the Elva, which is the plural of elf. And it's um, not. is it not? I thought it was a, a juvenile eel. It might be that as well. I think actually they're saying it comes from Elva. She goes in French. Um, uh, she does go apparently. Um, it's got the just over 800 horsepower V8 from the McLaren Senna. This is actually the lightest car the McLaren have made since the original F1, by dint of them lopping the roof and the windscreen off. Little touch here, you get rid of the windscreen. Doesn't need any wipers anymore, but you want all your mod cons. You want uh, light sensitive headlights. Where are you going to put the sensor? Well, you're going to put it there instead. So uh, what the main thing about this trick technology is that it has this system here that manages the air over the occupant's head. Yeah. It's claimed to work brilliantly, maybe not as brilliantly as, say, an actual windscreen, but it's an interesting idea also. They were going to build 399 of these cars, they then decided it would be 249, now it's 149. So if you want one of these, get in there fast before they decide they're not making it at all. You know when the McLaren brought out the P1, which was a plug-in hybrid, so it's actually, this isn't the first plug-in hybrid McLaren, and then their Ferrari did the, um, the La Ferrari, and then he had the other one, the 918 Spider. Yeah, yeah. Is it going to be the same with these three speedsters? Who's going to be the first person to have all three? Mm. The, 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 mm. out, uh, the Aston, this, this is my favourite feature actually, this scoop here. When you look down it, it just looks like the doors fully tunnelled out. It's incredible. Really, quite an, it's ridiculous, but it's fun. We still have some more, more McLarens. More McLarens, they're, they're trying to rival Ferrari for the um, accolade of who makes more different models than Ford and I think they're doing pretty well but they're, you know, they're getting there. The new they're company, they're still trying. More, more frequently. They are, yeah. Uh, there are more. Oh, tasty man. treats around, around the corner. Uh, I said tasty treats around the corner. I meant Lamborghinis. Lamborghinis coloured like Skittles but the one that I'd like to talk about is the one that's coloured like robot vomit uh, which is this, the Essenza SC V12. Yeah lot of stats around this as I need my little bit of paper. The main thing you need to know is it's track only. The look of it under this remarkable wrap was supposedly inspired by sort of the uh, sports coupe racers of the 70s. But uh, the main thing you need to know is that's 819 horsepower from a six and a half litre V12. That's the V12 the Lamborghini have used for a long, long time. Out of the Aventador, but tweaks up quite a lot. They're only going to make 40 of these. Uh, this it is generates the most powerful normally aspirated V12 that Lambo's ever made? I believe it is, because it, it doesn't, is. unlike that Scion special edition, it doesn't have a hybrid system of any sort on it, it's yeah. just pure petrol power. Um, that big wing and the splitter here and all sorts generates about 1,200 kilos of downforce uh, at 155 miles an hour, so that's peace of mind for I, I, fast cornering enthusiasts. It, it's kind of like Ferrari doing the, the, uh, the XX kind of yeah. series yeah. of like, you know, track only. This is track only, sequential gearbox made by X-Track, rear wheel drive, push rod, suspension. Uh, it's the first GT car apparently developed to respect FIA prototype safety rules. That's another peace of mind for anyone. Uh, if you'd like one, the price is a bit vague, between two and three million euros. Between two and three million? Between two and three million. I guess it depends whether you have metallic can paint. We, can we stuff, rest on two and a half? Let's go around the corner and have a look at some other stuff. <laughs> There's so many supercars. So many supercars. It's super ridiculous. Cars.
This is something you don't see every day. It's a Glicken house. Now, you might remember that company. They made a fabulous looking one-off a few years ago called the P4-5. Uh, this is a newer model, the SCG004S, all carbon body. Uh, a supercharged V8 in the middle, making about 650 horsepower. Uh, and you can have it with a manual gearbox or a paddle shift. And it's also, central driving position. Central driving position. Yeah. yeah. It's the brainchild of the guy actually who's behind me now with the hat on, Jim Glickenhaus, who's a film director originally. Yeah. Turned sort of um, race enthusiast, team owner. Yeah. Um, quite a cool car. And, and weirdly, not as expensive as you might expect, given the company that it's surrounding here. I mean, what's this, 460,000 US dollars? Yeah, so it's about 330,000 pounds, pounds. It's a lot of money tax still. in there to go on top. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's also, because it's all carbon fibre, uh, it's, it's very light, it's about 1,200 kilos, so says Jim over there, and that is with fluids. So that's quite impressive. That's for a three-seater. What I admire most about Jim, apart from his hat, though, is that he has some pretty strident views on the power output of hypercars. So this has 650 horsepower. As he points out, there's not really a road tyre around that can handle any more of that and put it down without triggering the traction control. So what's the point? He used some quite strong language to describe anything more. It started with a B and ended with a... Hit. And I agree with him, I think he's absolutely right. So the philosophy behind this car is pretty sound. Yeah. And he also said, obviously, when you come to sell a car like this, because of its central driving position, you don't have to make it left or right and drive for different parts of the world. So it's ambidextrous, a damn sight cheaper than the, uh, the Gordon Murray offering. Um, this particular car has been specced by the female owner who is there. And uh, the interior is um, giraffe leather. It's not real giraffe leather, is it? It's not giraffe. No, it's fake giraffe. Just, I'm just checking. It's not it's real. It's like modelled around the Elegant. leather of a, gir of a giraffe. It's really, it's wild. It's, it, it remains illegal to peel a giraffe. Please don't ask. Uh, you can have the interior however you want it, though. Personally, maybe not that. Do you know what I think? You choose. I think, you know what? The, the whole point of supercars is, is flamboyance to be seen, to be a bit out there. And people who just go out and fully celebrate that and just, just go, yeah, I've painted it in a loud colour, I've got some leery textures going on inside, why the hell not? If you want an understated car, you don't own a hyper or a super car. No. Um, we saw this before, didn't we, in Electric well, Avenue when we were up there? Um, this is the thing about Goodwood, you kind of get a bit spoiled because there's multiples of some of the really special cars. The Lotus Sevilla, there was one over, yeah, over on Electric Avenue. There's another one here actually operational. Are you sure it's not the same one? I don't know. It's like the... Um... I'd have to run over there really quickly to check. Well, are you phoning me? <laughs> yeah. I can still see it. OK, oh, so the Avaya. The Nevera. Again, there's Another two old of, friend that we've seen before. There's two of these at this show. One of them is running up the hill doing demo runs. The other one is, is on display for you to enjoy. Incredible car. As I said before, the fastest car I've ever had the pleasure of hanging on to and driving it really quite insane and futuristic. Now, we're going to wrap up here uh, on this side of things with um, a car that doesn't look like everyone's idea of a supercar, but it's certainly very nice. This is, as you'll see that there, the Rolls-Royce Black Badge Dawn. Black Badge Dawn sounds like a German of... heavy metal. A soft rock, German soft rock. I think I knew a girl called Black Badge Dawn at university. <laughs> but, um, it's so Black Badge is basically Rolls Royce is so sort of a uh, slightly sportier trim. You'll see all of what would normally be Deep shiny chrome, chrome is blacked in. Yeah. Uh, meant to attract a younger audience, but still very much a Rolls Royce. Lots and lots of creamy leather in there, and um, I, well, not, really a lovely, sort of, not really a supercar. Not really a supercar, but but a lovely car all but the same. But an interesting car. I mean, I mean and they then, got onto the 911 GT3s. There's a GT3 Touring. Should we have a quick look at that? Let's have a look at that. Come on. Um, We're going to stop there, but we can't. We, well, because this is one of my favourites in the sort of more modest realm of cars, because yeah. it's it's a, it's a mere what 125,000 there. Uh, yeah. So um, Porsche GT3. We've seen already the Touring introduced on the last model, the 99. Yeah. One gets through the rear wing for a sort of more low-key look. You get an uh, the last instead. Touring could only be had as a manual. This one now you can have a manual or the paddle shift. Same price for you, sir or madam. Um, it also uh, it still doesn't have back seats, so it's not as practical as other 911s, but it is deeply wonderful in every other way, I think. I, 
Would you have it's one? It's very cliche for a motoring journalist to like a hot 911. I love it. Just a little secret that I'll let you into. We are both car journalists and people go, oh, car journalists always go on about 911s. Why is that? It's because they're really good. They are good. Sorry. And they do a lot of things well. Mm, yeah. So Unlike it's me. not the most super, super car in price. It is in performance. It looks like mostly like another 911, but for me, it's actually more desirable than many of the cars here. Your mileage may vary. I want one in brown with tartan interior. I'll have it ordered for you tomorrow. <laughs>